in, who have um, really strong I identities associated with the accounts are very good. Um, uh, other, um, other services like MySpace um, tend to have more anonymous type uh, users and uh, to a certain extent Twitter as well. Um, um, on Twitter, there's really the, the category of people that have real identities tend to be the ones who uh, want to attract a large following. So they're the people who are marketing themselves a lot. And those are the ones that, that would tend to be more reliable as identities. People who are mostly followers, uh, you can't really gauge the extent to which their real identities are, or uh, uh, just a, a way to be anonymous. Um, so you can you can actually examine. Oh, sure. What's the advantage of using text messaging? Um, the I think the 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 loop is actually a little bit quicker, um, and also um, the the likelihood of of it you know the the message getting through is much higher. One of the one of the most difficult things um, that a small startup has to do is if they're if they have an email module is make sure that their emails don't fall into spam <laughs> folders um, getting your emails to go to go through is actually a relatively difficult thing and it's almost worth spending a little bit of time in class on <laughs> uh -huh. blocked on my phone because it costs money to receive text is do they, is that a significant problem or maybe not? Um, well, in, s in the smartphone world, it's less of a problem. Um, but, you know, I, I guess you can set up your sign up to support multiple different types of verification. Um, so, mm -hmm. I guess, like, I, I sort of understand the point of text messaging because in email, the purpose of verifying that is to know that they actually own the email. But unless you're, like, signing into your phone number, what's mm -hmm. the, how, how are you verifying anything with your SMS? Well, I mean, you're, you're verifying that that number, that number belongs to you. Uh, or, oh, okay. you know, so a, a phone number is actually a, a, a more heavyweight thing than a, an email address. Uh, well, now that Google Voice exists, uh, you can <laughs> you can get a phone number for free from them. But uh, but but typically, like the fact that you've got a phone number means that you've you've paid for it um, but, I mean, at some level. That phone number, like oh, you, you mean uh, well, it was right. Uh, so the the hope is that um, you can continue to contact them through their uh, their SMS uh, in the future. So uh, again, if if you uh, if you do this properly, you're also uh, creating these uh, systems in such a way that uh, that identifier is something that can be used as a backup uh, uh, communication method in in case there's important information that has to get through, etc. So um, leaving, leaving account management and going to data management, um, the, the, main, the main difference between account management and data, data management is that um, you're kind of uh, assuming in, uh, in user-generated data websites that a user can create information for themselves for an account once, and that each account can create multiple uh, data sets. And so the, n the main difference with uh, a data manager API is that uh, there's a, a user who's able to you know, create one or more many uh, data items on the system. And so um, uh, each, each piece of data that a user creates has uh, its owner. Um, and that, that owner is the essentially at creation time the the only person or the only account that's allowed to update that data so um, if you look at if you look at the way uh, uh, I've defined the API 
I've also left out a delete. Um, a delete can be also incorporated within the update page functionality, but um, the data cycle is still, again, the same kind of cycle that we've seen in uh, the RESTful um, system. And I'm going to probably just, you know, keep on hammering away at that during the course of the quarter because uh, it's, it's just such, it, it's such a great way to uh, manage your data and not have to think about it too much. Um, again, I've created the client-side data manager API in such a way that um, the, the data you receive is always coming back in the form of a, um, in, a, in the form of a set of items. And um, in general, um, uh, a given page will have one data object that's sort of central to that page, and then perhaps a, a number of other data objects that are peripheral, uh, but relevant you know, to the overall structure of the page. So um, it, it, it's uh, actually really efficient to just send one request for a page uh, to the server and then have the server figure out what objects it needs to populate the page. Um, so uh, so I, in order to keep the, the network traffic down, uh, using this methodology kind of gets you uh, really the, the simplest mechanism for uh, building a page um, based on one data stream. Oh, well, the, the create page would be sort of at the initial creation time. So if it's user-generated user content, say, uh, you know, uploading a new video on YouTube or something like that, 